Hello everyone and welcome back Dace here. In almost every shmup out there you'll survive 100% of the time as long as you meet two primary conditions, dodge enemy fire and destroy every boss you encounter. While the conditions are simple and may not sound like they're asking much of the player, we all know the reality is entirely different once we're in the pilot's seat. More often than not, just surviving any given STG or bullet hell will have a relatively high price revolving around your sacrifice and commitment, depending on your skill level and the game's difficulty. Even very experienced players still invest considerable time and energy to achieve their goals. While this video won't guarantee your survival in the next shmup you play, as that's your responsibility, it may at least give you a few things to think about and implement going forward, especially if you are new to the genre, less experienced, and or unfamiliar with some of the information we'll be exploring. With all that out of the way, let's get into this. So how do we dodge more often, bring down bosses more consistently, and ultimately increase our survival rate? Well, for starters, ongoing practice and digging deeper than casual play are undoubtedly key ingredients if you're looking to improve. But there's a great deal more we can bring to our game when we start thinking about what's actually happening on screen, begin coming up with solutions, and use this awareness to survive longer and play better. We'll begin with routing. Generally speaking, if we know what will happen at any given time during a stage, we can plan accordingly to ensure we are maximizing our safety and reducing the risk of error. When we pay close attention to the events unfolding, we can begin stringing together solutions for each event to create the safest possible route through the stage. For example, you're tackling stage 1 of any shmup, and know there are two massive laser cannons on the screen's left side that fire straight down after the mid-stage boss. The simplest solution, offering the greatest safety, is to be on the right side, where there is no risk of being hit. Next, you're aware two more laser cannons will appear on the right side, but that a wave of enemies floats down on the left, so the obvious solution is to position yourself in the middle. Depending on the game, mapping out an entire stage or the whole run for that matter can certainly take a lot of work, but it pays off, and the difference between conscious playing and reactive playing is like night and day. On one hand, you may be flailing around at the last second because you have no clue what's coming next. On the other hand, you are taking control of the situation by using knowledge of what will happen to your advantage, and remaining a step ahead of the game. Since this episode focuses on survival, the type of route we're talking about today is entirely different from what a skilled player's route might look like if they have created one for maximizing score. A danger, threat, or risk zone is any path a harmful object moves along. The threat could be an enemy projectile, an enemy fighter, or even a wall section that sticks out as the screen scrolls along. If positioning yourself closer to a threat, you increase the risk of error, whereas positioning yourself further away reduces that risk. Armed with this knowledge, we can start observing enemies, bullets, and everything else, and begin using the areas not traveled as temporary safe zones, or at the very least areas with minimized risk. For example, one enemy is slowly floating down the screen from the top left while another is in the top right, firing a steady stream of bullets diagonally toward the bottom left corner. You could technically position yourself above the bottom left corner, so bullets are not hitting you, but while you may be safe for a while, you're directly in the path of the slow-moving enemy above. This isn't the best option because it's only a matter of time before you need to move, or worse, you fumble something and take a hit, when you could have positioned yourself where you won't need to make last-minute adjustments. Instead, the bottom right of the screen is the safest area. Not only is it completely clear of danger zones, but you're not going to be too close to new enemies that filter onto the screen hence why you likely wouldn't use the top middle section as a first choice. But there are multiple ways to deal with or even control threat zones outside of simply where we position our ship or character. The first one we'll touch on is bullet ceiling. In tons of arcade shooters, enemies are programmed to only fire upon the player if they're a specific distance away from the enemy in question. If the player is within this range, the enemy will not shoot. Take some time to figure out what enemies function this way and use what you learn to your benefit. You may be able to hop from enemy to enemy and reduce the number of projectiles on screen in the process. The second is speed killing, and this is one of my favorites, especially when we have strong focus shots at our disposal. Speed killing is exactly like it sounds. If we destroy an enemy as quickly as possible, we can often remove a threat entirely by not allowing it to exist. One example would be a medium-sized enemy we know will unleash twin crisscrossing lasers shortly after it appears on screen and finishes charging up. 
Even though there are other enemies to deal with, this one always makes matters worse. Therefore, it makes sense to speed kill this threat immediately. If we focus all of our attention on taking down this foe before the attack is initiated, we never even need to think about dealing with the lasers. Next up we have bullet streaming, which can be a potent tool if implemented correctly. The basic idea is to funnel aimed enemy attacks into areas already containing other enemies or enemy projectiles. If you funnel an attack so it overlaps an area already filled with bullets or even shares the same trajectory, you prevent the creation of an additional danger zone. The fewer danger zones there are, the more free space you have available. This is important because if we need to evade an attack suddenly, it's always better to fly into an empty area and not a section brimming with projectiles. Next is luring or bullet herding, which, similar to streaming, is a form of controlling the trajectory of enemy attacks to create a more favorable situation. For example, a wave of enemies in the top left corner is firing a stream of thick clustered bullets that target you directly. If you flail from side to side, the enemies detect multiple positions and the attack is spread out, creating a mess no one wants to deal with. However, one basic example of bullet herding is to lure bullets off screen by slowly inching your way to one side. Doing this keeps the trail of bullets under your control and helps maintain free space as a result. Streaming and bullet herding may sound almost identical at first, and in some situations I have seen people use the terms interchangeably, but the way I differentiate the two is as follows. Streaming emphasizes the intentional reduction of danger zones by efficiently condensing multiple streams of attacks. In contrast, bullet herding is simply the act of luring attacks off screen regardless of whether it's being pulled into a shared trajectory or not. That's my understanding anyway. Furthermore, slow incremental movements are often used for streaming and herding, so it's easy to see why they're sometimes used interchangeably. But that's not to say that all streaming and bullet herding has to be done with slow and gradual movement. That's just one example. Anyway, moving on. Bullet patterns come in all forms, speeds, shapes, and sizes. Dealing with some can be tricky depending on their complexity. Throw overlapping patterns into the mix and it's often going to spell your doom unless you know how to navigate the patterns when combined. Sure, you can play reactively and pull off some great maneuvers here and there, but this is where playing consciously has the upper hand. Knowing how patterns behave means we can implement specific strategies or simple solutions to see ourselves through instead of leaving more to chance. So let's go over some patterns to better understand what we may encounter. First up we have static patterns. This type of bullet pattern is the same every time. It will follow a predetermined trajectory, and because of this they are 100% predictable. For example, if you know a static pattern is a simple 3 bullet burst, and visualize the trajectory of each projectile, you can quickly figure out where the safe zones are. The only time the danger zones may shift is if the enemy is moving or rotating to aim in your general direction, but this doesn't change the pattern itself, so we can always use the known solution. In almost every STG or bullet hell, you'll encounter patterns that are either aimed in your general direction or ones that target your exact position at any given time. In closing or even aimed patterns are attacks containing an even number of bullets fired in the player's direction but away from them to create an enclosing effect. In closing patterns will be two or more streams of shots, and the easiest way to deal with this type is not to move at all. You will almost never want to macro dodge in this situation because attempting to leave your enclosed area or unintentionally overshooting your movement will likely result in a hit. If there are overlapping patterns sending bullets through your enclosed area and enough room to afford movement, you can micro dodge in your little pocket of terror. We also have odd numbered aimed patterns, or aimed odd as they're sometimes called. This pattern will consist of one or more odd numbered bullet streams fired directly at the player. We'll use a three bullet attack for our example. Generally speaking, the middle bullet is the one heading straight for you while the other two are simply moving on either side. The simplest way to avoid this would be to tap dodge left or right. You can also macro dodge the entire pattern if it doesn't spread too widely and if it's not coming at you as a steady stream. If this type is being fired continuously, you'll need to inch your way to one side or the other while remaining in between the lines. Sometimes you'll face random bullet patterns either aimed at you or not. They can be a random shape, size, speed, etc. Or they may always look the same initially, but their trajectory may be randomized, or their behavior may shift over time because of some other factor. Since there are too many unknowns, the best way to deal with random bullet patterns is to read and react the best you can. Although we're unable to strategize with a random patterns like we would others, we can at the very least increase our observation. Sometimes a random pattern will be one of a few the system pulls from a pool of only so many random patterns. 
By being observant, it's possible to pick out subtle details like one happening more often than the others in the pool or something else we can use to help us. Depending on the pattern's appearance, you may even spot sections that are less dense than other parts. This is where you'll just need to pay attention, get creative, and do your best to avoid being hit. Homing attacks come in many forms, but will always be some projectile or energy source that begins with a standard trajectory and starts curving toward the player. Sometimes this curve will last a short duration, while other times it may curve until it reaches its target or is destroyed. The two primary homing behaviors you'll face are either fast moving with a lower turn rate or slow moving with a higher turn rate. To deal with faster homing attacks, you'll want to use a sharp movement and move behind them to cut off their targeting. If facing slower moving homing attacks, then creating distance between yourself and the attack is best. If the attack is on a timer before fizzling, then this allows you breathing room to focus on other threats because you've created distance to work with. If the homing attack doesn't expire, then you'll need to trail it along until you get to the nearest checkpoint, boss, or whatever else. Have we covered everything? Absolutely not. There are hybrid patterns that combine static or aimed shots with randomized characteristics and all sorts of other combinations. There's a galaxy's worth of exploration we could do on wrapping our minds around overlapping patterns. I could share loads of specific examples, but I feel it's best to jump in and see what you can discover on your own. We'll leave off here for today because I also don't want to dump too much information all at once when we can keep things more digestible. If you're new to the genre, then I trust you've found this helpful and that you can put some of this into practice during your runs. I intend to do another episode at some point where we'll explore things like micro and macro dodging, cutbacks, bullet redirection, plan bombs, and other facets to playing for survival. In the comments below, let me know what you thought of this episode and if there's anything you'd like to see at some point. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider flinging a like our way and subscribe to keep your days STG infused. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.